Good morning. I want to welcome you to our daily devotion time this morning. We're looking at the book of Ephesians chapter 1, and this morning, by God's grace, I'd like to unpack a little bit for you, if I may, verses 3 and 4 of chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, it is a wonderful thing to be able to start each day with God, and that's exactly what we want to do. We've read a couple of verses from the word of God, that that will sustain us, feed us, strengthen us, now let us go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for the day that you have given us. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins and our failures and our shortcomings. Lord, I pray that may this day be a day that you would open the doors that you'd have us walk through and close the ones that you would not. God, that there be opportunities granted unto thy children that we may be of service to thee in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, <clears throat> have you ever heard about a person who maybe didn't trust banks? So he had his money someplace in this house. <clears throat> story after story is told about large sums of money being found in mattresses or under hidden floors or under the mattress. More than once, we've heard of folks who have went lacking uh, in meeting their basic needs during life and after death, fortunes being found that had never been touched. Do you own treasures that you don't use? I think many Christian believers do. Many believers live in spiritual poverty when God intended them to live like royalty. And this brings us to the point of this scripture. Before we meet the Lord, he had, or met the Lord, he had already invested an eternity of spiritual blessings for every Christian believer. This scripture deals with God's plan for the world, his eternal plan. It deals with the great blessings of God, which he pours out upon those who trust him, trust his son, Jesus, as their savior. Now, throughout history, God has used a couple of methods of blessing to deal with man. Now, before Christ, doubt. God dealt with us by blessing man with material blessings. He promised Abraham and Israel land, wealth, fame. But Israel misused, hoarded the material blessing. Instead of sharing this blessing with other nations, Israel isolated itself and claimed superiority and God-given rights over other nations of the earth. However, since Christ, God deals with man spiritually, blessing him with spiritual things. Now, there's five things that I want us to think about on this aspect of our blessings. Spiritual blessings are foremost of the spirit. It is the spirit that controls man and the circumstances that surround him. Now, a man may feel bad, he may be down, depressed, oppressed, uh, depressed, but if his spirit is strong, he arises and conquers his feelings. He controls and overcomes the oppressing circumstances and he lives victorious day by day. But if his spirit is weak, whether at work or at play, he often wallows around in self-pity, grumbling, griping, living a defeated day. And too often the days stretch into weeks and months until a person's life 
is down more often than it is up. All because the spirit is too weak to conquer. Now thus the major blessings of God are bound to be blessings that are spiritual that enable a person to control his life. Secondly, spiritual blessings are the very opposite of temporal blessings. They are the blessings of the inner man, the blessings of the immortal. But all of blessings, they are the most glorious and satisfying. They are the blessings that erase loneliness, alienation, purple, purple, purposelessness, excuse me, of mankind. Uh, they are the blessings that give man an abundance of life. Thirdly, spiritual blessings are vastly superior to material blessings. They're permanent, perfect, eternal, lasting absolutely forever and ever. They are of the very same nature as God himself. Spiritual blessings exist and can be experienced both upon earth, physical dimension of being, and in heaven, the spiritual dimension of being. Fourthly, spiritual blessings are found only in Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus had been raised from the dead and exalted to the right hand of the Father in heaven. So he is in heaven, surrounded by all the heavenly atmosphere and, and beings and blessings, and all the heavenly blessings are his. Now, if a person is to experience Christ, to experience the spiritual blessings in Christ, if a person is in Christ, then he sits in heaven with Christ. Now, you might ask, how is this possible? In God's mind, faith in Christ makes a person just like Christ. Holy, righteous, acceptable for heaven. Therefore, when a person believes in Christ, God's mind sees the person in Christ. God sees the person identified with Christ, seated in heaven. And being seated in heaven, the person can experience all of the blessings of heaven. Now, fifthly, God dealt with man in material blessings first because man had to learn a few things. What are some of the things that, that we had to learn and, and many still need to learn? An earthly inheritance it just doesn't last. Subject to be lost, stolen. Uh, we either watch our material possessions deteriorate or else we leave our material possessions behind for others. An earthly nation and material inheritance cannot bring peace nor security. Because peace and security are of the spirit. Earthly nations and material things are of the earth. A corruptible nature within themselves. Thus, nations and material things do not solve the spiritual struggle that man senses within his own being. Neither can nations and material things erase the spiritual divisions between men and between man and God. Man has within his inner being a basic selfishness and greed. Man finds a tendency, an unrelated, unregulated urge that desires and seeks the material and hoards the corruptible to the neglect of the spiritual. Now, man must undergo a basic change of character in order to be freed of these kind of urges, this tendency that causes so much bondage and disruption and division with, within one's self and between man and man. Man must be born again, made into that new creation, 
created into a new man spiritually, permanently, perfectly, eternally. And such a spiritual creation must be performed by someone much greater than himself. Man must be recreated by the hand of God himself. Now, there are no spiritual blessings outside of Christ and heavenly places. Now, in practical terms, this means that there is nothing apart from Christ that can satisfy anyone who loves Jesus. Any passion that does not end with Jesus as the des destination is simply a counterfeit distraction. The psalmist said, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are the pleasures forevermore. Now, if we cannot find what we need at his right hand, we have no need of it at all. If, let's see, Will your blessings be there when you need them? Wiersbe shares, a, I guess it's somewhat humorous illustration with us on this. He said one of the funniest cartoons that he ever saw showed a pompous lawyer reading a client's last will and testament to a group of greedy relatives. And the caption read, I, John Jones, been of sound mind and body, spend it all. When Jesus wrote his last will and testament for the church, he made it possible for us to share his spiritual richness. Instead of spending it all, Jesus paid it all. He wrote us into his will, then he died so that the will would be in force. Then he arose again that he might become the heavenly advocate, our lawyer, to make sure the terms of the will were correctly followed. Now, just imagine, God determined before the world was ever created that he would have a people, a people who would be in him, that is, in his son Jesus, who would be holy without blame, who would live before him in love forever and ever. Now, this means a, a, an absolutely great thing, doesn't it? God wants to be with you and be with me. God does not want us separated from him. Gripped by sin or shame or sorrow or pain or death or hell. God wants us to live forever and ever with him. Now, in fact, God has determined that some will live with him in Christ. He has chosen us, chosen believers to live with him, and no amount of rebellion, rejection, cursing, or denial of him will stop his purpose and his plan. God will have a people who will live with him, and he will continue to choose us until he has the number that he has intended. Now, the great blessing of God, that we should be holy without blame before him. Now, the word holy here means set apart, consecrated to God. It's the same word that's used for saint in verse number one. Uh, the apostle Paul, is in 2 Corinthians, said something like this. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now the word blameless means to be free from sin, dirt, filth, to be above reproach, without blemish, without fault and defilement. Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, that ye may be blameless, harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Brother, I tell you what, I think Paul was looking down to 
2021 and send folks in America, a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Now, God has chosen the believer to be perfect. Now, there's something that we've got to know about this thing now. As believers, our perfection is in Christ and in Christ alone. No man, not even a believer, can live a perfect, sinless life. No man is righteous or ever will be. Jesus Christ is the only person who has ever lived a sinless and perfect life. Therefore, he is the only person who has the right to live with God. The only one. Our only hope of ever living with God is to believe in Jesus. Believe so much that God will take our faith and count it <coughs> as the righteousness of Christ. Now, as you go through this Thursday, I'd like for you to ponder a couple things. What kind of barriers do you encounter in this life that keep you from living a life of holiness? What would you consider the ultimate goal of being holy, being blameless? And how does it make you feel to know that God chose you? Thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given me and given my people. Use me, use my people. God, I pray your purpose be fulfilled in the name of Christ. Amen.